Hey, what's good? Welcome to the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We provide the best and most entertaining Impact Wrestling review each and every week. Content just like what you're about to watch right now, periodic interviews, and of course, covering the news topics. Right now, you're about to check the top 10 reasons to watch Impact Wrestling. Just like my last video, this was conducted off a survey. I may have threw a couple little surprises in there, but for the most part, it's a fan reaction survey. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and consider sharing on social media platforms. Without further ado, let's get into it. Professional wrestling used to be built on big, muscular, imposing figures, but over the years, smaller wrestlers have seen their runs as main eventers and world champions, whether it be in Ring of Honor, WWE, or Impact Wrestling itself. Because the cruiserweight slash X Division style of wrestling has been adopted by wrestlers of all sizes, the interest in the heavyweight style of working has began to dwindle amongst wrestling fans. Despite these challenges, Impact has been able to put on good heavyweight matches in the main event with larger, stronger guys who can really work. Currently, these stars include The Machine, Brian Cage, Unbreakable Michael Elgin, and the legend known as Moose. Also guys like Willie Mack and Fala Ba are putting on quality matches in the mid-card. Impact is the best company for those who like heavyweight wrestling. It was just a few years ago that Impact Wrestling fans in the United States only had access to the weekly show and two yearly pay-per-views. There wasn't much content to digest because Explosion was only available in the UK and the monthly one-night only shows were rarely any good. With monthly Impact Plus and Twitch shows, the fan base has access to what are essentially house shows partnered with various independent promotions around the country. The shows give Impact the chance to scout new talent, as well as give the fans opportunities to learn about new upcoming stars that we could potentially see on Impact Television. The biggest show to broadcast on Twitch was Impact Wrestling vs. Lucha Underground, and some of the best Impact Plus shows included Unbreakable and Turning Point. Although it's been a common occurrence to experience video and audio difficulties, the matches featured on the cards have mostly been solid and from an entertainment standpoint have been a major step up from the one night only shows. One thing that Don Callis and Scott D. Moore promised upon taking over Impact Wrestling was less talk and more action. Wrestling fans have become accustomed to hearing 10 to 15 minute long promos to kick off a show and they rarely offered any substance or entertainment. More often than not, Impact has been limited to a single in-ring promo with most of the promo work being done through quick backstage segments, interviews, and vignettes. These backstage segments allow the wrestlers to deliver their words more confidently without having to worry about the crowd reaction. A lot of Impact Wrestling storylines have been able to advance to not only these backstage segments, but segments done outside of the arena. And it's been able to hide any weaknesses that the talent may have on the microphone. By limiting the in-ring talking segments, the fans have been able to focus on the in-ring action, which is especially helpful in keeping the live audience engaged. With mainstream wrestling becoming more and more PG and targeted towards a younger audience, Impact Wrestling has traditionally tried to best appeal to an older crowd, having no problem with putting sexuality on screen with acts like Taryn Terrell and The Beautiful People, just to name a few. The current product has continued these trends with talents like Katie Forbes and previously with Scarlett Bordeaux. The company has never had issues with airing blood on television as many stars have been busted up on camera. Impact has also pushed the line with angles like Ali being murdered by Sue Young in the Undead Realm, then Jessica Havoc trying to murder Sue Young, Ace Austin trying to bang Alicia Edwards, the much talked about intergender wrestling with Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan, and they even chose to air the baseball bat botch where Sammy Callahan mistakenly clobbered Eddie Edwards in the face with his bat, shattering his eye socket. That with the unapologetic use of adult language, this has made Impact Wrestling a viable option for those who prefer the TV-14 style of television. Ever since the beginning of TNA, the X Division was a staple for the company and was well received, especially by those who missed the Cruiserweight Division in WCW. After the days of AJ Styles and Samoa Joe entertaining the audience, the division went downhill under Dixie Carter. The division was no longer booked with importance, and many of the champions either had uninteresting title reigns or had won the championship as a prop with no real intention on defending the title. 
The division began to resurrect during the brief return of Jeff Jarrett with stars like Matt Seidel, Loki, Sanjay Dutt, but now with Don Callis and Scott Diamore on board, the division has come back to full form. This is not only because of the great innovative wrestling, but intriguing storylines which was something that the X Division had lacked for several years. Champions like Brian Cage and Rich Swan brought prestige back to the title, and now with every episode, the X Division as a whole leaves it all in the ring. Impact Wrestling's X Division is the strongest and most entertaining that it's been in years, and definitely a big reason to watch the show every week. When Santana and Ortiz were still part of Impact Wrestling as LAX, both stars and fans alike would proclaim that LAX was one of the best tag teams in the world. Now this proclamation was often responded to with trolling and laughing emojis, but now those same fans have changed their tune watching Proud and Powerful on All Elite Wrestling. Now that Santana and Ortiz are in AEW, the North, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, step in as the best tag team in the world that gets the least amount of respect. Now, while several stars in the Impact Wrestling roster are being overlooked by the wrestling community, none are more slept on than the North. Page and Alexander combine intensity, power, innovative tandem moves, and top-notch work on the microphone, which is why they sit firmly atop the Impact Wrestling tag team division. The North are also credited for retiring LAX from Impact Wrestling and serve as one of the best reasons to watch Impact each week. Much like the X Division, the Knockouts Division had reached unparalleled levels of popularity and gave women a chance before the women's revolution was ever even considered. Now, most TNA and Impact diehards know that in the heyday of the Knockouts Division, it was the highest rated segment on the show. But also like the X Division, the Knockouts were a hot commodity that lost a lot of momentum under Dixie Carter. In 2016, Maria Canellis Bennett had a stranglehold on the division, dominating the storylines despite only wrestling three or four times while with the company. After several failed signings under Dixie, the division finally started to take form under new management and boasts the best women's roster in years and has reestablished itself as one of the best female divisions in wrestling, highlighted of course by Taya Valkyrie, who is currently the longest reigning knockouts champion of all time. The unique aspect to the knockouts that no other company has is that creative has been able to find storylines for each knockout, making each individual woman feel like an important part of the show. Before Callis and Diamore took over, you would be hard pressed to find an impact match that you can classify as match of the year for the company for its respective year. For quite a while, Impact put on solid matches, but nothing to really get the wrestling world talking. Don Callis also made the comment upon taking over the company that Impact wasn't cool and wanted to make the product cool amongst passionate wrestling fans. This included signing big names such as Tessa Blanchard, Brian Cage, Sammy Callahan, the since departed Lucha Brothers, and improving the aforementioned X Division and Knockouts Division. Instead of just putting on decent wrestling matches, Impact has now focused on putting on quality matches each week, even allowing former comedy acts to compete seriously inside the ring. Also, their improved focus on character development for stars such as Moose, Eddie Edwards, and Kiara Hogan have helped the wrestlers feel fresh inside the ring, which avoids any of the stars feeling bland or overexposed. Sometimes as fans, we question why booking decisions are made, and it's easy to forget that sometimes writers have long-term plans in place. A lot of modern-day wrestling feuds have been given quick burns, so when a slow-burning storyline is playing out, we often don't realize it until the actual payoff. Even though some of the long-game storylines are still predictable, like Sammy Callahan vs. Tessa Blanchard, they are still more satisfying than doing too much too quickly. In recent years, we've seen the slow evolutions of broken Matt Hardy and brother Nero, Ali from apprentice to wrestler, as well as from bunny to dark alley. There are countless examples over the last couple years of angles and character progressions that took many months to unfold. This is much more enjoyable for wrestling fans than angles that move too quickly and are unable to blossom into anything worth investing in. Wrestling fans often complain of WWE's short-term booking, so Impact Wrestling is here to offer the opposite. Although Impact Wrestling has been doing two specials per month that some fans consider pay-per-views, the company is currently running four official big shows per year, with two of them being Slammiversary and Bound for Glory, and then two additional ones. By doing these quarterly pay-per-views, the feuds have more time to build, and the rest aren't as burnt out with pay-per-view expectations. 
It's clear that the Impact stars treat every pay-per-view as if the company has a chip on their shoulder and they go out there and deliver. Each pay-per-view under the Callis Diamore regime have been top-notch and at this point seem to be getting better and better as the roster improves. Impact Wrestling's pay-per-views have been getting better reviews than WWE's pay-per-views over the last several years and is definitely the number one reason to watch Impact Wrestling. The next pay-per-view, Hard to Kill on January 12th, features the main event of Sammy Callahan defending the Impact World Championship against Tessa Blanchard. Thanks for checking out the video and thanks for checking out the Impact Lounge. Again, this is the best place for the Impact Wrestling fans to consider becoming a subscriber and check out some of the other content on the channel. I will be doing videos just like this weekly. Thanks for checking us out. Peace.